Hello, my name is Dean Blosser from Hazmat Solutions. Whether you're collecting a drum from a hurricane, testing a spill at a factory, or trying to identify precursors at an unknown drug lab, there are some simple tests that you can do to determine the degree of danger associated with any unknown liquid spill. Raman and FTIR technology today is incredible. The Raman can shoot a laser through a container to identify the contents. However, if you don't have an extra 60,000 for the Raman or 4,500 for the HazCat kit, I can show you how to identify the chemical properties and hopefully the risk to the responders from any unknown liquid. So what physical hazards are going to bite us in the butt? Obviously flash fires, shock sensitive crystals, and gamma radiation can make for a bad day at the office. We've all been taught to lead with a radiation detection device and pH paper. That's fine, but I like to put pH paper, oxidizer test strips, and Watismo paper on a pole and then dip it into the product. The Watismo paper is used to detect water but I use it to determine if the liquid is organic in nature, such as carcinogenic benzene or simple hydraulic oil. If the Wittismo paper does not turn blue, the solvent is anhydrous and will only wet pH paper. The oxidizer test strips will turn black for an oxidizer and remain white for all other hazardous materials. So if you're testing from an unknown drum, a plastic sampling tube is used to remove a small amount of the product. Use a pipette to drop a dime-sized amount onto the watch glass. A match is then used to test for flammability. If the flame jumps to the sample, the product is flammable, versus if the product needs to be heated up and then catches on fire, it's considered to be combustible, with a flash point roughly of 100 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's test for solubility and specific gravity. Fill two test tubes about halfway with water and add a small amount of the sample and some oil. If it is not soluble, it will either float or sink depending on the specific gravity. If it's less than one, it will float. If it's greater than one, it will sink. In this case, the oil floated while our sample pretty much was miscible and it mixed with the water itself. In this case it appears that we have a water-based oxidizer with a pH of 5 to 6 which makes it slightly acidic. If you would like to also rule out pesticides, nerve or blister agents, M8, M9 paper and a smart strip can be used to detect certain WMDs. Based on the information gathered, we can compare the data to safety data sheets for chemicals in the area or use an app called Wiser to narrow down the potential list of chemicals. If at this point you still have no idea what the chemical is and there are hazards indicated such as flammability, you can send a sample to a laboratory for chemical identification. Or if all else fails, you can use the fire chief method, smells like fish, which means it could either be an amine or in this case, water leaking from a dumpster that contains coho salmon from the Pier Marquette River. Either way, you do not want to step in it. I hope you find this basic information useful for identifying unknown liquids. And as always, stay safe out there and thank you for your service.